When you open a raw photo in Photoshop, the camera raw dialog is gonna pop up. And it looks like this, and all the sliders right here are the same as the sliders in Lightroom, so it's very tempting to start sliding them around and editing your astrophotography images. But when you're done, the trick is that you shouldn't just click this open option at the bottom. If you click the button down here that says open, you're not gonna be able to go back and redo any of these sliders. So the way to fix that is very simple. It's actually one of the best tools in Photoshop. You hold down the shift button on your keyboard and then click open object. And that opens this Milky Way photo as a smart object, which means at that point you can double click on this part of the layer in Photoshop and the same camera raw dialogue pops back up. All of your edits are still there and you can change them however you want. Most people who've used Photoshop before are gonna be familiar with the layer blending modes on the little drop down menu right here. One of the more popular ones is called Overlay. Uh, you can see it right here, it adds a lot of contrast, actually way too much in this Milky Way photo, so I'm gonna lower it down. Uh, but the reason that I'm talking about the overlay effect right now is that it's very helpful actually for adjusting the color in your astrophotography. So here's how it's done. You just have to create a blank layer right there and go to the brush tool and you can pick out any color that you want. And now just paint these colors throughout the photo. You can see right now that it doesn't look great, but when we set the blend mode to overlay, it looks much better, especially when we lower the opacity. Uh, right here, I'm going a little over the top with some of my color adjustments, just so that you can see what it does. And all of this can also be painted over really easily if you decide later on that you don't like how it looks. When you want to edit the foreground of your photo separately from the Milky Way part of the photo, here's the process that I think looks the best. First, you're going to create a separate layer for the foreground by using probably one of the weirdest shortcuts in Photoshop. Uh, click the top layer and then go Control Alt Shift E on your keyboard. On a Mac, that's going to be Command Option Shift E. And this creates a new layer on top of everything else, which is basically a flattened version of all of the layers below. And then on this new layer, we're gonna select out the foreground and then edit it with some clipping masks. So to select the foreground, I'm just gonna use the object selection tool. And this selection doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna fix it in a bit. So then click to create a layer mask. And if you add an adjustment layer right now, like the curves layer, it's going to affect the whole image by default. But there's a tool called a clipping mask that makes the adjustment affect only one layer. So hold down the Alt key on your keyboard or the Option key on Mac, and then click the space in between the two layers. This way the adjustment only affects the layer that it's clipped to. Pretty cool effect, but you can see right now that the foreground selection is really rough. Uh, it's got a little halo around here. So click the mask on your foreground layer and then go up to this option that says Select and Mask. This is one of Photoshop's best tools. It gives you a lot of options to modify the mask. So play around with them until there aren't any weird halos. Uh, right now I'm gonna shift the edge to completely eliminate the halo. And then you can also add or subtract from your selection with these options here at the top. So I'm gonna go through that. And then click okay. And now you can modify your adjustment layers like the curves layer, I think it's a little too strong. And then you can just make as many clipping masks as you want. And at the end of the day, your foreground is gonna look exactly right. So if you wanna give the stars a little bit of a background glow, here's how you could do it. Uh, create another flattened layer on top of everything using that same keyboard shortcut, uh, Control, Alt, Shift, E, just the same thing as before, and then change the blend mode on that new layer to screen. Now you're gonna to go to Filter, Gaussian Blur, and then put a radius around 30 to 35. And if the glow is too strong, which it probably will be, you're gonna to need to lower the opacity of the layer. And it's also still too bright, so let's create a curves layer adjustment and then darken everything just a little bit. And you can make this effect as strong as you want by changing the opacity of the glow layer. Uh, the stronger that it is, the more uncomfortable it's gonna be to look at and also the more photo contests that you'll win. If you wanna select the stars in your astrophotography without the rest of the sky and without the foreground, you can use a really useful tool in Photoshop called Color Range. So go to Select, 
color range, and then change this drop down box right here to highlights. After that, you can adjust the slider to only select the stars and also how soft you want the mask to be. Once you're done, click OK, and it creates this incredible looking selection. All you have to do is create an adjustment layer of whatever you want. So when I click on curves down here, I can now adjust my curves layer and it only affects the stars. So you can darken them or brighten them however you want. It's a really good way to make a quick and targeted adjustment. If you've learned something from this video, maybe hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I'm Spencer Cox, and I'll see you next time.